Hi folks, Harry here. With so many nonlinear editing platforms out there these days, it's really critical to have a workflow that allows you to be independent of the platform that you're working with. We had the same challenge here at Boris Effects with our tutorials. We needed to create a picture in picture effect that we could share across multiple platforms. Some of our content creators work in Resolve, some of our content creators work in Adobe Premiere. So we needed to create one effect that we could share across all of our creators and keep ourselves aligned and consistent in terms of our brand. And we did this using the Sapphire Effect Builder. So I'd like to show you our solution. So today I'll be working in Adobe Premiere Pro and in my sequence, I've got the video clip that you just watched of me. And then also on another track, I've got a Photoshop document that is the design I need to follow. So we're gonna recreate this design using the Sapphire Effect Builder. So to do that, I need to apply S effect. And I'll do that by a search over here, S underscore effect, and then drop this right on my video. Now it can go to edit effect, and this will launch the Sapphire Effect Builder. Now, if you've not used this before, it's pretty simple. The source node is the video that I just applied the clip to, and the result is what I end up seeing. This is the output of all the effects in some way need to feed into this result node. So if I were to add a shape to this, I could insert that in between the source and the result. And the quick way to do that would be to go over to my components and search for a node that I want to add, such as a shape node. Now you'll notice there are actually two different shape effects within Sapphire. And to cut to the chase, I'm going to use animated shape. I find the parameters are easier to set up a simple polygon. Now I can drag this in between the source and result and have it composite just like that. Or I could disconnect this and have it be its own node over here on the side. And I can find a different way to use this or composite this. Now to see this, I could either feed this right into the result and that will allow me to see it or I could create a compositing node to blend the source and the shape together. And that's what I'm going to do. In the compositing section, there is an effect called layer. In addition to it having two inputs to blend a foreground or background, it has a matte input. So with the animated shape node, I'll take its output, feed it into the matte input of the layer node, and then output the layer node into the result. So we're feeding the source into a compositing node, and then into the compositing node, we're feeding a shape to the mat input. So on my animated shape here, I need to change the shape of this. I need to set this to a six-sided polygon, otherwise known as a hexagon. By default, the relative width is 1.5, which I'm not sure why it does that, maybe to make a rectangle, but I really think that default could be 1.0. If you agree with me, leave a comment below and let us know what you think. So I've got a basic hexagon shape here and I'm going to size this down because I kind of like to work at more of the final size that I'm going to be working with rather than doing too many post transformations that will scale it down and affect the anti-aliasing. So I'll make this pretty small, but let's make it a nice round number like 0.25. Now you can see that the video, the source video, is a little bit too big to fit inside there. So I'm going to insert another node to transform the source video down. Now I could go to the components to do that. I can also tap the tab key and I need to have some sort of transform. So I'll type transform and right here is my transform effect. And I can just double click on that transform to insert it right after the source. So there are independent X, Y scale controls. A nice easy one to use is this Z distance that allows me to use one slider to scale this down. And I can shift this around to fit inside this hexagon shape. Now from here to match the original design, I would need to add a couple more shapes to add a border around the edge 
and then to add another color border around that. So I can make two different shapes, composite those together, and blend all that stuff together. And I could do that. My friend and coworker John Dickinson showed me a much simpler solution using one of the transitions as more of a utility. So I'll keep this warp transform because I'll still need to size my video down, but I'm gonna delete these and show you a different approach. In the transitions, there's something called a wipe star which is exactly what you might think. It's a star wipe. What a great way to start your day than put a star wipe on your face. And this is a transition, so I need to bring the wipe percentage down. Now, just because by default this is a star wipe transition, that doesn't mean that's how we have to use it. So let's get creative. I can still set this to a six pointed shape, and then I can turn the pointiness all the way down. And look at that, we've got a hexagon shape. The wipe percentage now is going to drive the overall scale of the hexagon. So I'll size this to something like 0.8, and that looks pretty good. Another cool thing about this transition is that it has a border section down here. So I can set the border color to white and turn up the border width. And now we've got our border added to our clip. Pretty cool. So we've already combined the matte, the border, and the compositing all within one node of the star wipe. So now to add the border around this, I will have to create a new shape and composite these together. So I'll hit tab, type shape, and double click on the animated shape. Now I'm going to disconnect this, and I'll feed this into the background of the transition. So not only is the transition node doing all this other matting and generating the border, but it's kind of acting as a compositor in this case, because I can composite the foreground and background together. I'm just going to set this to an arbitrary color right now, so it's not white, and I can see the difference of the colors uh, together. So I need to set this to a six-sided polygon, change the relative width to 1.0 and bring the overall size down. Now I'm well aware that I'm kind of eyeballing everything right now, and I have a Photoshop document that I need to be referencing in terms of its size and border width and all that. So I'll show you how to bring that in so we can reference it and make sure that our design matches the design that we're given. So I'll hit OK and jump back to our sequence. And I can see that we'll need to do some size adjustments here to match the size, and obviously we'll need to position it into place. So what I can do is in S effect, in my effect controls, I can define the background, and I'll set this to V2 or Video2, so I can reference this Photoshop document. Now before I do that, let me open this up in Photoshop real quick and show you the layers that we've got. So what we've got going on We've got a green layer that is to be our video matte area. So I need to crop the video inside this green area. And then the shape and borders need to be variable and they depend on the brand that we're working with. So for example, this tutorial I'm doing right now, we'll need to use the sapphire colored border because the tutorial is oriented around sapphire. So with that in mind, Let's jump back over to Premiere, and I'll hit Edit, Effect, and this will launch the Builder again. And now because I've defined that Photoshop document as the background, this background node now has the Photoshop document image. Now, I don't really have an extra compositing node here to feed this into. So I can either create a new one, or I could just directly feed this into the result so I can see it. But I should have an extra compositing node to put these together for reference. So I'll do that right now. So I'll tap Tab. And the one I like to use is Layer. I just pretty much use this for any compositing that I need to do in the Builder because this allows multiple inputs. So as a foreground and background, it allows me to swap the inputs if I need to and also has all the blend modes that I would ever want. So I'll feed the background into the background here feed all this design stuff into the foreground, and now we can see these at the same time. I'll insert one more node here to move this into place. So I'll transform it 
and kind of center it right where this shape is so I can match these a little better. So with that wipe star selected, I'm going to go in here and type transform and use warp transform again. And I will use the shift and X, Y to line these up. In fact, with this layering node, I can turn down the foreground opacity to kind of blend these together and just get the video kind of centered. Now I need to backtrack and do some better scaling uh, in the original design. I try to avoid using scale to scale these down because they're going to scale the anti-aliasing of the edges, result in some flickering in video, or just unpredictable things, and I just don't like to do that. So back in my wipe star, I'll bring the wipe down, and I'll go to the animate shape and bring the overall size down. And in my source, I will bring the Z distance up to kind of push my source video away and also shift it over just a little bit. So that's kind of an approximation. I need to dial this in to actually get it nice and aligned with the original design. So I'm going to disable this animated shape to get rid of the colored background. I'm just going to focus on the video mat and the white border. So I'll hit Command or Control in Windows D to disable that node. And in my wipe star transition, I need to get the wipe star to not only align with the video mat, but where the border is. The border of the wipe transition actually goes on the inside. So I need to make sure that the edge of my white border aligns with the edge of the white border in the Photoshop doc. Looks like I need to transform this down just a little bit more. There, that's looking pretty close. And then in the border, I'll simply bring the border down in terms of its overall thickness. And this post transform looks like it could nudge down just a little bit. There, so that's looking pretty close. And then I'll turn my animated shape back on. And I will bring the size down just a little bit. I think that's looking pretty close. I'll turn the foreground opacity back up to one. And I think we're looking pretty good. Now, a really cool thing we can do in the builder is rename these nodes so that the name is a bit more practical. So in this case, this warp transform here is more of a pre-transform, or maybe I'll call this the source transform. This animated shape is actually the border color, so I'll call this the border color. The wipe star is not really a wipe, it's actually our hex mat. And warp transform two is a post transform. And now that I've dialed this in, I don't need this compositing node. So I'll just get rid of that. And all of this stuff is feeding into the result that looks good. And if I hit OK, I'll need to turn off video two so I can actually see it. So we're pretty close here. So things that I want to be able to do with this effect are fine tune the source video. If I drop this on here and somebody else is framing their video a little bit differently, there's different headroom, the face is bigger or smaller, we'll need to be able to shift and scale that source video down. Now we can do that here in our source transform, but it does get a bit messy because we've got all these parameters in here that we don't really need. Same goes for all these others, like all this hex mat stuff and we could greatly clean this up. And this is a really cool thing that the Sapphire Effect Builder can do, which is define which parameters are actually visible in your effect controls. So for any given node, I can select that and with these checkboxes, define which parameters are visible or not visible. 
In fact, up here at the top, I can click on this one to turn all of them off and then just turn on the parameters that I need. In this case, I want Shift X, Y, and I want Z distance so I can scale the source video. In terms of the design, I really shouldn't be touching much of anything that affects the overall size of the borders or the video mat. I've dialed all that in, so I don't need to touch it, and nobody else should be touching it either. So I'm going to turn all those off. Post transform is the same thing. It really shouldn't be touched. So I'll go in there and turn all of those off. The border color, the only thing that we really need to worry about is the color itself. Like I showed you in the Photoshop document, I've got different layers with different colors. So I should be able to change the color to match the brand. So I'll turn all of these off and just turn on color. So now in my parameters here, I just have shift X, Y. So that allows me to shift the source video around and the border color that allows me to pick it to one of our brand colors. Now in my libraries here, we have a shared design library with all of our assets. And at the very bottom, I have all of our brand colors. So for this one, which is a Sapphire product, I'll use my color picker and grab the Sapphire color right there. Now, as I was talking about workflow at the very beginning of this tutorial, I can go into the effect builder and I can click on save as, and I can save my effect here. So I'll call this picture in picture Sapphire and I can save it, but I can also click on export and save this file externally. So I could throw it on my desktop or on a Dropbox location or Google drive anywhere that I can share with editors all over the world. So I could simply save this to my desktop. So I'll have it to share with my coworkers and I can save the effect here as a preset as well. Now every host app is different, but here in Premiere, I can also save this as a preset that I can drag and drop right on my video. Now, before I save this, I want to remove the background designation here. So I'll set this to none. That way, every time I recall the effect, it's not trying to call up video two. So I can go up here, click on save preset, and this will be my picture in picture Sapphire. Click OK. So now on my source video, if I remove this effect, we've got our full frame video. And if I go to my effects and remove my search under presets, I've got picture in picture Sapphire, drag and drop this onto the video. And now I've got my picture in picture effect right there. So drag and drop preset. So I hope this has shown for you how incredibly powerful and useful the Sapphire effect builder can be, even for something as simple as a picture in picture effect. This allows us to work in one environment and output presets that multiple platforms can use, keeping everybody aligned. So my name's Harry Frank for Boris Effects. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't, so you can get all the great content in the future. I will see you in another tutorial.